Well, I know it's the moment you've been waiting for. The year to date, June 2020 compared to June 2019. Stay tuned for the latest and greatest information. So compared to some of my other videos, this one is going to be relatively short because the information is just stacking on top of the information we've had so far this year. And I have a couple predictions going into the fall and some challenges that are out there that I want to talk about. But let's go over the numbers real quick. So June, month over month compared to June 2019 and June year to date compared to year to date 2019. I um, looked at new listings. So there are actually 17 and a half percent fewer listings coming on the market in June this year compared to last year and just 13 percent less year to date. So the first half of the year 13 percent fewer listings are coming on the market compared to the same time last year and we all know that that's a challenge. However, Earlier in the year, those numbers were significantly higher. So the inventory problem is still there, but it's starting to be minimized a little bit as more sellers are putting their homes on the market. New pendings are up 20, almost 21% month over month compared to last year, but they're only up about one and a half percent year over year. So that actually is kind of good. A little shows a little bit more of a balanced market. The number of homes that have sold is up 31% over June of last year, and year to date, it's up 10% over last year. So that's a really good number. The dollar amount, the average sold price in June over June, it's up about 7.5% over last June, and year to date is up about 7.5%. Now that growth is a little bit more than normal growth. Normal growth is about 3 to 5%, and so homes are growing about 2% faster um, than what's out there, but uh, if you own a home, your value has gone up probably about 7.5% compared to this time last year, and it's gone up 7.5% since January. So that is really, really good. Uh, days on market on average is taking 37 days. Now I will tell you this, there was one home that sold in June that had been on the market for over 2000 days. There were several homes that had been on the market for over 1000 days and they finally sold. They finally sold. So that kind of skews those days on market a little teeny bit. Uh, right now, the average is about 37, 36 days on market, and that's 15% faster than it was this time last year, where it was about 40, 45 days on the market. So homes are selling, on average, quite a bit faster than last year. Some of the challenges of this market and some of the benefits of this market, one is if you are looking to move up. So you're looking to sell your starter home and move into a more expensive neighborhood, a bigger home, waterfront, something like that, this is a great opportunity for you to do that. Uh, more than likely the home you're trying to sell is in a very high demand price point and the home you're looking to buy is in a price point that is more of a buyer's market. And so if you're thinking about moving up, this is a great time to do that. My team and I actually have a special move up program. So if you're interested in learning more about that, click the link in the description below and it will take you to our move up page on our website. So that is a benefit of our market. One of the challenges of our market is those who are looking to downsize. And the reason why it's a challenge is because they will be selling their larger home in more of a buyer's market and looking to downsize to purchase in a home in a market that's a little bit more seller friendly. So they are experiencing the opposite of the move up buyer right now. And one of the other challenges of the downsize buyer is they're also competing against, in many cases, competing against the first time home buyers. And that's making up the majority of the activity in our market right now. A lot of first time home buyers are out there. A lot of people are demanding those homes between 
400,000 and below, that seems to be where the majority of business is happening right now. And that includes both the downsizers and the first time home buyers. So if you're thinking about downsizing, it's important for you to meet with someone on our team or me to talk about what the plan needs to be for you and what some really good options are for you as far as what the next home would be. Because there are some opportunities out there that first time home buyers are not interested in, but they are perfect for you. So we can take a look at that. And also home condition. And the last time we experienced a market like this, which was during that bubble, and I know that puts a lot of fear into people with me saying the last time we had a market like this was in the bubble, but this is very different. This was organic growth. Um, it truly is supply and demand. Uh, but in the last time we had a market like this, condition of a home really was not that important. So back in 2005, your home could smell bad, it could be dirty, there could be things that are broken, and buyers are still going crazy over it. But these days, now that we've had 15 years of HGTV, Chip and Joanna Gaines, all the flipping shows on TV, all the magazines, all the Home Depot stuff, all these wonderful things, buyers are expecting homes to be in excellent condition. So condition is still an important factor in selling your home, even if you're in that first time home buyer price point. I've got to say the homes that I have that look cute will on average sell for tens of thousands of dollars more than the exact same house that just isn't decorated as nice. So it's important for you to have features. It's important for you to have your house prepared, staged, ready to go on the market. And my team and I love consulting our clients on what should be done, what shouldn't be done, helping them stage. We have a stager that we use to help set up things and accessorize and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important for your home to be in tip top condition and to show as beautifully as possible in this market. Some of the unknowns going into the fall. Number one, how is online school going to impact our market? I know it's gonna impact me a little bit in my regular day-to-day -day activity since I have two children that will be on online school, but the beauty of my job is I do have some of the flexibility to be able to monitor that and be able to help my clients out at the same time. But it'll be interesting to see how online school has an effect on our market. Typically our market, as soon as the kids go back to school, we see a little uptick in market activity. Um, after Labor Day, so I'll be interested to see what happens because of online school. The second thing is the presidential election. Every four years when we have a presidential election, the market tends to slow down just a little bit as far as buyer activity is concerned. And of course, as we all are anticipating, this year's presidential election is gonna be very contentious and be highly charged. Um, and I'm interested to see how that affects consumer confidence and activity. I'm not saying it's gonna stall everything out altogether. It may not have an impact at all, but that is something that's coming up that traditionally does have an impact on buyer activity and consumer confidence. So I'll be interested to see what happens with that. And then moving backwards, what that means is if something were to happen in the COVID-19 environment and Virginia ends up going back into phase two or back into phase one for a period of time, I'll be interested to see how the second round of that impacts real estate. I've got to tell you, the first round did not impact real estate at all. As a matter of fact, it seemed to me as soon as we went into the uh, stay home quarantine, that is when sales started to soar. It was incredible. And people in our market, they still wanna go out and look at homes. So I'll be interested to see if we do move backwards in our phases, how that does impact our real estate market. My overall conclusion so far this year is that we still do have a very strong market. And the strong market was built on many different things, but supply and demand is what's driving these seven and a half percent increases in home prices. The other big thing that's helping our market is very, very, very low interest rates. Who could have believed you could get a 30-year fixed mortgage for less than 3%? It is absolutely incredible. So if you're not thinking about moving, but you think about refinancing, let me know. I can connect you with a great local lender who can help you with that. Um, our continual growth will continue. We may not continue to see the 7.5% growth next year. Maybe we'll be back into the more normal range, which is 3 to 5%. So we'll see how that works. But I think our market will continue to grow. And one thing I've discovered in helping 
so many sellers and so many buyers this year is that cash savings is ultimately important if you're looking at purchasing a home. And that's because when you are competing to purchase a home and you don't have cash available, it makes your offer very limited in what you can do. So if you have, if you're thinking about buying a home later this year or next year, my advice to you is start saving. Start saving cash so you have cash on hand, maybe to do renovations after you move in, maybe to increase your offer price, maybe to pay for inspections and other things so having cash savings is really important and if you'd like a resource that we can help you with to help you build those cash savings just let us know and we will connect you with that great resource also don't feed yourself the news give yourself a limited period of time where you get the news for the day so you know what's going on but please don't have it playing in the background all day long. There is no way you personally can remain positive if that happens. And you can get the news. Nothing major is gonna happen in the world without you knowing about it. But if you're constantly putting it into your head, that's gonna have an impact on your spirit. And we all need to have best spirits out there. And having a positive spirit is something that, can, um, that has a um, impact on consumer confidence. So try not to have that news blaring in your ear or on the TV or on the radio all day long. Get your news, move on, listen to some positive stuff, uh, great podcasts, great music, play with your kids outside, go take a walk, get into nature, really start focusing on feeding yourself some really good mind food as we go through this. So my team and I have been helping clients in our area for over 17 years and we would love to be able to help you and we study the market so we know exactly what is going on out there practically on a week by week basis so if you or someone you know is thinking about moving into our area or out of our area moving up downsizing renovating refinancing all of that we would love the referral and we would love to be able to help those clients out so i hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you in the next report at the end of august